Hello, everybody, and welcome to a brand new episode of The Who Bulletin. I am not very well prepared today, folks. Oh, shit. I'm dropping wires all over the place. I tried to get ready on time. I didn't have enough time to get ready on time. And Matt? All talking about a TV show about time. Oh, for fuck's sake. This is very silly. This is very, very silly. Welcome, everyone. Hope you're having a lovely, lovely evening. Um, so far, it's about to get a whole lot better, though. I'm just telling you in advance, there's a warning. Not a warning, what am I talking about? Um, let me just get you guys set up over here so I can actually see your guys' chat on my little camera. Um, and when I do that, I can then read out all your lovely, lovely names. So a huge warm welcome to Dr. Master, Thunder King 24, Mr. Scarlo, the Hooligans, Vanders Who, aka um, Triad Technologies. I'm not silly, come on. Um, ben Newbolt, uh, J Dragon Art Productions, Costa King, Stream Steam Rocks, DWFA16, and everyone, everyone else. Um how are you all doing this evening, friends of the Doctor Who community? Are you all doing all right? Um, are you? How are you? How are you? I'm great, thanks for asking, by the way. And you know what? Because it's a Who Bulletin tradition, we have this evening a pork pie. A pork pie? A pork pie. We have a pork pie for you all. I'm going to quickly promote this over on um, our Discord server. And then we'll start talking about Doctor Who stuff. So that's fun. Mm -mm -mm. Hope you all had a lovely Easter. <laughs> the usual Who bulletin combo. We've got a monster and a pork pie. A few pork pies, to be precise. Um... I'm just going to put a little thing in here. Live now with the Who Bulletin over on YouTube. Mm -hmm. At notifications. If you're not on our Discord server, I'll send you a link. Join here. Join our Discord server. Um, it's a nice little place. There's not too many people in there. It's a nice little tiny community, which is kind of heavily moderated. If people start being a dick, then obviously they'll get kicked. But um, the nice thing that it's used for, for my sort of content, is so people know when we go live here. When we go live here on YouTube, when we go live over on Twitch, when there's a new podcast episode. That's right, I have a podcast. Link below. Um, but let's talk about Doctor Who. Before we do all that, though, let's... Um, Let's do the hoodle for today. I want to make this a regular thing, because I quite like it, actually. The hoodle for today, everybody. Um, come on. Come on! <laughs> um... Long time no see, Josh. How are you doing? How have things been? Welcome, Liam Lovett. It's going all right. I'm a bit tired today. Um, you know, it was our, my first day back at work today after a lovely little Easter absence. And, um, yeah, it's very fun. <laughs> I'm tired, though, and running on not very much sleep. So it's going to be a bit of a drowsy stream today, but we'll try as best. Um, 70th anniversary of Doctor Who, starring George Shield as the 11th Doctor, Thares as David Tennant. I could be... I, I think I could be the 11th Doctor. We've established this before. Um, we're all different people all through our lives, and that's okay. That's good. You've got to keep moving, do all that sort of shine. Um, I could do all that. That's quite an easy one. I think that would have been a harder one to start on than the soup. The soup's kind of, like, iconic to Hellbent, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I got it in one today. Not very exciting. I was hoping it would last longer. Mm 
Oh, um, sorry for ruining it, Joe. Yeah, we'll be doing the hoodle every week. That is the plan so far. Um, so for those who weren't around on Sunday, I did do a four-hour live stream, live reacting, um, live reacting, of course, to the title announcements and the brand new trailer. This does mean that I haven't actually got a um, uh, really too much new stuff to talk about. Um, but I will, in time, talk about that. So let's talk about the new trailer. Let's go through it. Doctor Who trailer. And let's break it down. Because I feel like I did a little bit of a one then. Should you eat a macaroni pie next time? That's an interesting idea. Welcome, DCS Media. Do you have experiences? You have experience of, as all three Doctors. David Tennant, Matt Smith. Peter Capaldi. I've had a little bit of that. A little bit of that, you know? I've done a little bit of all that. <laughs> um, fun. So, what have we got here? Season 1 trailer. Yeah, I'm, I'm ready. Um, but ready to not watch it and get copyrighted. I'm ready to turn, a, turn the sound off. So what we're going to do is talk about the episodes, which ones they could be. This one, uh, my prediction is The Legend of Ruby Sunday. We know the unit is going to probably be involved with the finale. It's going to be like a big scale Earth one with the dust storm and stuff. So I have a feeling this is the beginning of The Legend of Ruby Sunday. Um, obviously the Beatles episode, The Devil's Chord, episode 2. Not sure with this one, actually. This could be a range of things. Let's come back to that one. This is obviously also from that same unit episode. Um... Dun, 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 dun. Got Rose Noble there. Great shot. Lots of other people in the background. From the Beatles episode again. Um, Devil's Chord. This is also from that same unit episode. Um, they're wearing the same outfits, Shooty and Millie, which would imply that um, Carla Sunday... Is it Carla Sunday? Am I being silly? Am I being silly? What's her name again? Is it Carla Sunday? I think it is, isn't it? Something like that. Um... A, unit, a reused one from the 60th? I don't think so, because it's got a new... I mean, the actual shot of the thing might be new, and then they've added the TARDIS asset on, but I don't really mind. Um, but interesting that you've got Ruby's mum there along with them. Presumably she came in the TARDIS with them, since they were both in there. But we can't really see that from the initial shot. We can see Kate Stewart in the background, of course. Um, I love this sort of zero gravity stuff going on here. It's very exciting. I wonder how they filmed that. That's very cool. Um, the shots of the TARDIS and the Vortex look incredible. Can we just point that out? This looks just unreal. How good the texture on the box looks. Compare that to the actual like title sequence. This is just incredible. And the title sequence is great, but this is just something else. This is looking to be from the episode Dot and Bubble. The thing we know the least about, but is most likely going to be a sort of Black mirror -y kind of episode. Um about society and technology and all that sort of lovely stuff. Um, giant slugs and all that sort of... Um, yeah, so that's interesting. This one looks to be 73 Yards, I think is the episode title. Um, it's the one that we know the least about. We know that it's going to have some more like law-based stuff in here. A lot of sort of canon-y sort of stuff. So it'll be very interesting to see what this is all about, what episode this is all about, but it looks like this is parking in the same place that the TARDIS gets left when it disappears altogether, so I wonder if it's something to do with that. Um, we also see the Doctor peering out of the TARDIS box here, which I think is interesting, um, because obviously in one of the episodes, in Boom, we know the Doctor stands on a landmine, and it could be very likely that he stands on a landmine immediately after um, stepping out the TARDIS, which would be quite funny. So it's interesting, this time he's not actually stepping out, he's looking first before doing so. Possibly a little detail, possibly looking into it too much, I'm not too sure. Um, <clears throat> we've got a shot of the Beatles episode again, Devil's Chord, you can see Big Ben in the background there. Um, very cool. More 60s stuff from the Devil's Chord, very cool. I'm very excited for the musical numbers in that episode, I'm hoping they'll be good. Um, we've got a shot... An amazing shot. This is going to be very much like the end, uh, end of the world. So Space Babies, as you can see here, which is the same outfit that she wears in Space Babies from the Church and Ruby Road as well. You've got some sort of fetus babies in like glass jars here, which is in intriguing. And um, you've got this big thing opening here. This is likely going to be the first time Ruby sees 
space. It's going to be her first moment seeing open space like that. And that's interesting. I like the look of that. Um, we have the episode Rogue, which I believe is episode 6 of this series. Um, lots of, sort of dancing. We've got this sort of mysterious possible time agent, possibly even a young Captain Jack character. I've got Shooty looking across at him. Um, Ruby talking about Bridgerton again. Um, uh, this shot is from the episode Boom. They're in a sort of um, scrapyard kind of battlefield vibe. Ruby's wearing this top in that episode. Um, and this is, looks to be, from Space Babies, when they first come out of the TARDIS. Maybe it's a complete surprise landing. I think in either this trailer or the previous trailer, there's one line about Shooty about going, like, random location, and they pull a lever and they go, and it's the same outfit. So presumably they go to the dinosaur era, and then maybe she can't make up her mind on where she wants to go next, and maybe they do the whole thing where, okay, we go somewhere completely random, they pull the lever, and then Ruby goes out first, Hence the eyes closed, opening up, and it's like, oh, a spaceship. Sparks flying. Interesting. Um, and then we've got her swinging like a bat or something, or like a bit of wood. This looks like in the same scene with the bogeyman. Um, so interesting to show a little bit of confidence there from Ruby, not like scared of a very clear monster kind of character. Um, nice little scene between Ruby and a woman um, in the Rogue episode. Um, that looks like it's from either the church on Ruby Road or uh, that's been reused or from Space Babies, again, going by outfit. Um, this is from Space Babies, again, same outfit, spraying fire. Interesting, interesting. Um, and then we've got the, yeah, the Devil's Cord episode. Nice purpley sort of blue interior. Um, fantastic outfit, <clears throat> walking across Abbey Road. This Abbey Road has been the subject of a lot of uh, criticism from people online. <clears throat> I'm going to briefly touch upon that now. Um, so, yes, I'm a big Beatles fan. Um, love the Beatles and spent a lot of time listening to all of their albums last year, so I'm buzzing about this episode. Um, but I do, I do also own the Abbey Road uh, vinyl and I have looked at it many times and obviously this doesn't look exactly like the Abbey Road vinyl. One, <laughs> one, I thought it was taken in the 60s. Two, it was heavily edited. Three, it was square. So this is going to look slightly different. It's also a TV show, and they also didn't film it at Abbey Road. And there's a few reasons for that. But one, Abbey Road now doesn't look really that much like Abbey Road did back in the 60s. Um, this is just how productions work, as Jay's pointed out there in the chat. Um, this is how... Like, this is how they use, like, just this is how the production works, basically. You, you, you have the location scout and all that sort of thing. The likelihood is most of the episode takes place on the rooftops of Abbey Road or a building in London and in the studio itself of Abbey Road. So the likelihood is they weren't going to come all the way to London just to film the exterior of a famous building, which now looks completely different to what it did in the 60s. You need to bear that in mind as well. Abbey Road is a phenomenal tourist destination. I've been there multiple times. I used to live around the corner from it in London, and I've been there multiple times. And it's lovely. It's a really, really cool location, but it is tattered with tourist evidence. Like, the walls around, like, these bits outside of the actual Abbey Road are graffiti to everything with uh, memorials and... Um, artwork and all that sort of thing. It's brilliant. It's gorgeous. The street lamps on either side, um, so the, the crossing lights on either side, um, covered in stickers as well. It's very cool and it's very, very nice. Um, but it's not something that's entirely viable. Um, Doctor Who Abbey Road. Because I remember Peter Capaldi and Jenna Coleman actually went there a few years ago to film and to take like an actual photo there. And as cool as it is, it's not quite the same as the original. So the original, that's what it looks like. And that is correct, that is what it looks like. Um, and that is actually at the real Abbey Road. But it is different. The, the lines on the floor are completely different to how they were. Like, the... It is also heavily controlled and probably quite expensive to film at that okay. But, yeah... Bottom line is, who gives a shit? It's probably going to be for like one or two shots. Um, they're crossing the road just so we get a cool Abbey Road looking shot. 
that's all we really want. It's not the end of the world if it's not entirely accurate. They didn't film it at Abbey Road. They couldn't anyway because it's probably quite expensive to do so. Again, Abbey Road is fucking hectic. On the other side of where that famous photo was taken, immediately behind it is a roundabout. It's a busy road and tourists walk across there all the time and it's a nightmare. Um, yeah, it's awful. But also, who gives a shit? That's the other thing. Um, let's have a look. So we've got that. Then we've got a space station with what looks like Coruscant from Star Wars in the background. Um, gorgeous CGI shot. This looks like it could be the space station from Space Babies. It's unclear. I don't think we're getting any other spaceship sort of episodes. So this, I'm guessing, is going to be from Space Babies, but I'm not too sure. Um... Do, 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 do. We've got um, this is from Space Babies, where they're looking at the babies who seem to be talking with a weird CGI mouth. Not sure how I feel about that. Um, that might look a bit dodgy, but obviously they're talking to the babies. They've got um, some sort of uh, something, yeah, some sort of talking thing there. Lights on the side of their chair. Very interesting. Um, like a nursery ship. And then this is also from Space Babies. And what looks like quite a, like a dank area. Ruby's hair is sort of wet there. Um, there was talk, a joke at one point, um, of uh, the bogeyman, who is the monster of this episode, having some sort of funny twist to it. And I think it's you can kind of see a mile off that <clears throat> the likelihood is that the bogeyman is going to be made of actual bogeys. And that is also probably what's in Ruby's hair. That's my guess, anyway. Another shot from Space Babies, um, from the beginning, where he talks about the um, pulling going to a random location. Um, pretty fun. This is also from Space Babies, likely before they go out and see the dinosaurs, maybe. It looks like a different scene to the one previously where they're pulling the lever. Um, then we've got a shot from Dot and Bobble, I believe. Again, the one about sort of social media and the giant slugs. There you go, there's your giant slugs. Um... It's very interesting. So you've got some sort of AR thing going on here. Um, some sort of digital reality. That looks like a sort of digital sphere around her. So I'm thinking maybe every it's a place where everyone is in their own bubbles. They're surrounded by their own notifications and apps and all that sort of thing. Um, they don't have to interact with other people. But they are basically listening and controlled by a system which is telling them to do stuff like this. Like walk forward into the jaws of this giant slug creature. Interesting. Um... That's from Devil's Cord as well. Um, Space Babies. That one is the one from the old BBC trailer. We've seen that shot before. Good shot. Um, but they'll be doing that. This is the Bogeyman. As you can see, the Bogeyman seems to have a few eyes on the side of his head here. Possibly more eyes around here as well, I'm not sure. Um, but he's got this sort of grim aesthetic. Um, he's sort of dripping wet a little bit. has these horrible sort of whale-like teeth. Um, which is cool. Quite a scary monster. Uh, likely going to have some sort of funny twist like it's actually made out of the baby's bogeys or something. Um, and then we have a shot from Boom! Episode 3 uh, where Ruby's standing on the battlefield. Probably looking at the Doctor, but unclear. Looking out just into the battlefield. Maybe there's going to be some sort of fun twist as to where this battlefield actually is and what the significance of it is. We've got the desert sort of sand planets again. I'm not sure what this is about, but could be people dissolving, could be something like that. Could be Earth. Carla Sunday here. Again, we've had this dialogue exchange before. I'm going to keep saying Space Babies now you said that. Um, not sure what episode that could be from, but it's probably mid-series or something like that. Um, a shot of Ruby. Unclear as to when exactly that is. That looks like it's from Boom. Because he's got a sort of different looking jacket on that we haven't seen yet. Um, and it's the same sort of aesthetic in the background, quite dark. It looks like it's be quite an emotional episode. Um, this is from Space Babies. Um, <laughs> it's from Space Babies. This is also from Space Babies. This is what looks like to be from the finale. So we've got um, the storm cloud kind of coming in. 
And right in front of us, we've got um, the Doctor and Mel on their little moped there driving away from it. So this looks like it's going to be in that unit finale. Same outfit as those episodes. Super interesting. We've got Jinx Monsoon with her character um, from the Devil's Chord. Looks like she's kind of coming out of a piano kind of vibe. I'm not sure exactly what that's about, but I kind of like it. Um, it's kind of a funky little visual, very Toy Maker esque. I'm hoping she's going to give the same sort of vibe as the Toy Maker. Um, again, Devil's Chord. Boom. It's hard to say. Basically, this is this the one from Boom here looks like this is the shot of the TARDIS materialising, maybe. Or maybe not. Or maybe the TARDIS is already there. That's another shot from Boom, I think, a close-up. All the dialogue around this bit is from uh, Boom. This one, not too sure about. Could be closer to the finale than anything else. I'm not too sure with that one. Um, but there is a shot in the previous trailer which lines up with that. Could also be Boom as well, I'm not sure. Um, this is from Boom. This dialogue exchange, which is brilliant dialogue. Um, this is from the title sequence. That's also from the title sequence. That's from The Devil's Chord. Great shot there of Shitty overlooking uh, London. This is from Rogue. Um, uh, and then we cut across to another shot of Ruby, either reused from the Church on Ruby Road or... A new one from Space Babies, because that's the same outfit. Or oh, the end of the series. Yeah, it looks like reused from Church on Ruby Road, I think. Again, we've got that shot. It's, again, I talked about this last uh, last time, but I'll sort of mention it again. This shot being cut next to this shot makes it look like it's at the same location, but actually this shot matches what we've already seen from um, that other shot from earlier in the trailer, where the Doctor's kind of just standing on a thing by himself. Uh, no, not standing on anything by himself, but where the TARDIS is on the air outcrop. Where the hell was it? Was it earlier than this? It might have been, actually. Where was it? You know which one I'm talking about. Ugh. Yeah. It was one of... There it is! Very, very brief shot, but that's the... Um, this is the one... From from yeah from this episode here, which I think is going to be seventy three yards, um, that's where that shot is from on the hill. So bear that in mind. Um, they're wearing different outfits. So actually, it looks like this is actually not connected to the previous one, but actually connected to the following shot, which is the dinosaur location. Looks great. Really love this. This is going to be from Space Babies because they're wearing the same outfits. There's a lot of stuff from Space Babies, which is cool, because we're getting a lot from the earlier series, not so much from the later stuff. Um, we've got Shooty running down a corridor in the Devil's Court. Um, we've got another shot from Rogue there. We saw these a lot of these in the first trailer, actually. Um, Jonathan Groff's character pointing some sort of space gun at the Doctor there. Interesting. We have got the Doctor standing on a mine in Boom, Episode 3. This looks to be from the finale, same outfit, jacket combo, could be unit headquarters, looks like it, um, and there is snow indoors. We talked about snow and how that could be a theme at one point in time, but we haven't really gone too much into it. Um, the, I, I, there's a strong belief that snow is going to be a prevalent theme throughout this series. Um, for Ruby's character. Um, obviously, it was snowing when she was dropped off as a baby. Um, we see snow indoors in a couple of scenes in these trailers. This is one of them. And there seems to be snow going on. I'm not sure exactly why that would be inside, but it looks like that's the case. We've got a shot from The Devil's Court. Um, and another shot from The Devil's Court here, which we've already seen. Notice again, it's snowing. <laughs> So I love this shot, and I want to talk about it. So this is a very brief shot of the TARDIS here, because it's kind of fading for most of its um, screen time here. But this is the TARDIS in a vortex, right? It's a CGI shot of a TARDIS in a vortex, and it is bloody gorgeous. It's a great shot. It looks incredible. But notice how the end of the shot, before it starts to fade, it's actually in space. It's actually come out into space, and you can see this blue particle here, um, you can't really see that on, on, on your guys' cameras there, but 
there's sort of a blue particle here which is sort of like in the time tunnel and it's at the end of the time tunnel and then it sort of fades into space which means this is probably one of the first ever times that we've seen the TARDIS in flight in a vortex transition into real space in real time in one shot which is a bloody gorgeous visual and I'm so glad we're getting some really creative shots of the TARDIS the last thing I want to see is more just shots of the TARDIS spinning for no fucking reason I want to see shots of the TARDIS in the vortex in space doing things and actions that we haven't quite seen before take advantage of that CGI budget make something look really nice this looks actually brilliant look at that how nice that shot looks it's so like satisfying to look at um Another shot of the space station from Space Babies, I believe. Um, this shot, he's wearing the same outfit from Boom. So I'm going to presume it's from Boom. Maybe when the mine <clears throat> is sorted. And yeah, looks like the next morning. It's not during the night like the rest of the shots from Boom. So maybe it's something to do with that. I'm not sure. Another shot here. This looks. This next shot looks like it could also be from Boom. We've got some sort of dusty ground looking up into the stars. Um, that could be from any episode, really, but most likely from Boom looking at the ground, but that's just a guess. We've got another shot from the title sequence. Uh, Van der Um So, kind of saw it in the 50th, I think, with John Hurt. Did we... Oh, you know, you're you're right. We did, but it it wasn't as good. <laughs> uh, that was that was that was lower budget. This looks like a lot nicer. You know what I mean? Like it's just a cool. I don't know. It's nice. So, shot from the title sequence. A great sequence of the Doctor dancing with um, all of these audience members um, in the sixties episode in front of an orchestra. No less, which I think is incredible, and I'm very, very excited to see what the crack is with this. A butterfly there, leaving the Doctor's hand, presumably after um, Ruby becomes a lizard. He saves the butterfly, maybe, and lets the butterfly fly away, and that stops Ruby from being a lizard, that's my best guess. More musical sequences from the 60s. I am super excited. I really hope they get some good music going here. And, like, I'm not, I'm not dissing... The music from the Church on River Road with the Goblin song. I'm not dissing it. I thought it was fun. I thought it was funky. But um, I want to see some proper 60s style music going on here. There's Ruby rocking and rolling. A shot there of the Doctor in his yellow raincoat and beanie from um, 73 Yards, I believe. Uh, it's hard to tell, but it's the same sort of location. Whatever episode that is where the TARDIS lands on an outcrop, this is the one. So this will probably be the one where the Doctor goes missing or something like that. Uh... Austin Powers theme song was a great idea. I'd love to see that. Um, mm, a shot of Ruby from Space Babies. And a shot of the Doctor and Ruby from either The Legend of Ruby Sunday or the finale. Some sort of studio space. Again, notice, it's snowing. And then the Doctor looking at the camera once more. Really, really great trailer. It's a really great trailer and I'm super excited. And this is a cool title drop as well. Looks nice. Looks nice. Looks better than the actual title sequence, in my opinion, but... Mm -mm. There we go. That is my sort of run-and-gun breakdown of the second trailer. Hope you've enjoyed that. Um, yeah. But I'm excited for a lot of these. I think there's a lot of great possibilities and ideas in there, I think... It's a great trailer, and I think all the episodes look great. I think I'm very excited for all of it, to be honest, but um, I'm not too sure. Oh, God, why is my stream loaded up on my work computer? That's so funny. <laughs> um, yeah, that's fun. Oh, that becomes the title sequence. Yeah, me too. But I just, I just don't think it will. But I think it looks better. I agree. Um, something I recently did is I rewatched the 60th anniversary specials. I rewatched the Star Beast. I rewatched Wild Blue Yonder, and I rewatched the Giggle. I'm yet to rewatch Church and Ruby Road, but I will at some point. Probably closer to the series coming out, if I can get into the vibe of those two. So. My thoughts on that. Um, the Star Beast is mid. 
I can't lie. Like, it's not great. Like, I, I did like it. Don't get me wrong. It's got redeemable qualities, but it's very rushed. I kind of want to review it now. I kind of want to make a YouTube review of it. And that's my thought process. I'm not sure if that's something that you guys would like to see. But I'm kind of thinking I'll do that at some point. I can't lie. Um, I was not disappointed. That's not the right word. But I was sort of surprised as to how not great it was. <laughs> Maybe that is the same thing, I don't know. Do you reckon in 50 years' time there'll be a Doctor Who historical where he goes back in time and has a celebrity historical with, like, KSI or Logan Paul? That would be quite funny, actually. I'd love to see that. In a stupid way, but I'd love to see that. Um, Wild Blue Yonder is the best. Giggle is second. Star Beast is 100% last. I am in 100% agreement with you. The Wild Blue Yonder is absolutely incredible. I was super, super impressed by that, and I think... Especially giving it a couple months to come back to it. It was really, really good. And I'm super impressed. I'm really, really impressed. Um, the giggle was excellent as well in its own right. Not as clean, but pretty close. It's probably the closest we're ever going to get to like 2008, 2009 Doctor Who again. Which I love. Just as like a one-off like return to form almost. Um, yeah, I had a lot of fun with it and I really like that. What else... What else? What else? What else? What else? What else? Um, okay, side teams up with the absorber off. That'd be quite funny. <laughs> um, let's do some thirteen. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll maybe I'll do it. You know what? I'll do the um. <laughs> I'll do the uh, promo, the obligatory promo prior to a stream. Um, but yeah, we are having a fun time here on Tuesdays. If you're not familiar to how we stream over here on YouTube, every single Tuesday when there's Doctor Who news, we stream here from 7 o'clock till 8 o'clock. And you might be thinking, that doesn't sound very long, George. Put some graft in. Do some more fucking work. And... You'd be wrong to make that judgement, because I do put in the graft, but we actually stop streaming on YouTube at 8 o'clock, and we move over to Twitch. So not quite yet, but at 8 o'clock we'll be moving over to Twitch, where I will be playing, God forbid, Fortnite. <laughs> I'll be playing Fortnite until about 10 o'clock this evening, from 8 o'clock, over on twitch.tv slash gbsheard. If you drop me a follow over on there, it will come up on stream, on screen here. Um, and I'll give you a big thank you when we start streaming over on Twitch. But that that is going to happen tonight at 8 o'clock. It's going to be a lot of fun. We usually play a lot of different games. We played Arkham City recently. Uh, we're going to do a sort of one-off Fortnite playthrough before we try and play something else, I think. But um, I'm quite excited for that because it'll be very chill. Um, and probably draining my attention span, but it should be a laugh, shouldn't it? Um, on top of that, if you are not already aware... I don't know how you would be at this point because I keep banging on about it. But we do also have a podcast called Nostalgia Bait um, that uh, I co-host with a friend of mine. Um, super, super excited about it. It's a great little show and I'm really chuffed with it and I want to keep pushing the shit out of it where possible. The link is in the chat now. Um, so if you go and check that out, that would be greatly appreciated. Um, but yeah, basically just drop us a follow. Give us a good rating if you fancy it. But <clears throat> for the most part, yeah, new episodes every single Thursday and we've got a fun video gaming uh, related episode this Thursday where I talk about my f top five video games of all time, which is very cool. Um, but yeah, seven episodes on there already. A lot more to come. Shut up, Dr. Master. We, we, we are I'm allowed to promo it. Um, but yeah, that's stuff that we've got in the works. And obviously I am working on YouTube stuff. I've got some exciting stuff coming soon um, that I am working heavily on to try. And what I'm basically trying to do is I'm trying to get like three or four videos lined up in a row so we have things to actually release for you guys that aren't just dog shit. That is actually like enjoyable and fun and like it's not just one video and then never again. I want to have like a few videos in a row that I can actually do. Um, it's sad that we will not be getting a Big Chief Studios version of the 14th, 15th Doctor. Yeah, but I don't know. It is what it is, isn't it? It's 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 a pain in the ass, but these things happen, you know. These things happen to companies, and that's just the way the world works, unfortunately. That's capitalism for you. Um, I sound like a twelfth doctor now. 
Capitalism in space. Um... Did you hear about the Fortnite X Doctor Who collaboration that was made up by a troll? I don't know how made up it was, because it seemed pretty legit at one point in time. Like, it seemed all but confirmed, and then suddenly Russell was like, nope, that's not happening. So that's a shame. But I don't know if that's, like, actually because it was never happening, or whether that was just, like, something... And I don't usually believe random bullshit online, but actually that's the one where I was like, that seems believable. Doctor Who um, 60th anniversary. But then they got the Lego collaboration, and it makes me think that they had the Doctor Who one planned, but they maybe scrapped it. In exchange for like a um, like a Lego one, which is fine. Stop choosing it for thirty-two thousand points. I got to, uh, the best I've done on this computer with that many points is Eccleston. Don't think I've got to tenant on this computer, but the furthest thing I've ever got is Smith, I think. But I'm going to try and play it properly here. I'm going to try and do well. And you guys can ask me questions. Drop me some questions in the chat. Let's talk. Let's have a let's have a fun time. My opinions on stuff. Latest Doctor Who episodes. I mean, we also just talked about the 60th there, but other stuff like that. Happy to talk about. Happy to talk about. Lovely. Straight to John Hurt. The Roblox collab with 1310 and the Pating. Oh yeah, I do remember that. More Lego Doctor Who is needed. That's a good shout, mind. The Lego Dimensions stuff was great, wasn't it? And the Lego Doctor Who sets would be lovely. I'd love to see them again. They were fun. I love the Lego Doctor Who set. But it just would never become a proper range. Unless Doctor Who becomes a massive brand. Which it could do. Under Disney, it could, could very well do at some point. We just don't know. We just don't know. Um, what are your top ten... Who stories slash episodes? Oh, I haven't got like a strict sort of top ten, and it sort of changes all the time, really. Um, I would say some underrated, well, underrated, some favourites of mine that I would sort of care to mention. Uh, Parting of the Ways and Bad Wolf, I think, are just strokes of absolute genius from Russell T Davis, and I just, I, I will never not love him for creating a masterpiece of a story. It's just excellent. It's just so, so good. Um, but um, I'm trying to think what else. Um, I mean, Blink's kind of overrated. Not overrated, but everyone everyone talks about how good Blink is. It's not a fucking surprise at this point. I was like, oh my god, Blink, that's a good shout. Never thought of that one before. It's not very unique, is it? Um, but I don't know. It's sort of uh, yeah. That's annoying. Uh, I'm trying to think of more episodes that I really, like, genuinely just will, will gas up no matter what. There's not too many, you know. There's not actually too many, like, that I adore, adore, you know. That's like an exclusive club, isn't it? So it has to be. You can't um, constantly have your favourites on standby, can you? Just to be like, yeah. Best episodes of all time. Always. Am I going to fucking fail this now? Am I about to fail this fucking game right now? I think I am, you know. Motherfuckers. Right, I'm doing that again. Bollocks. Now, Blink isn't overrated, but everyone says it's like the best episode of all time. And I'm, it's really, 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 really good. It's an absolute masterclass in in modern television. But it's... It's like we're talking about a 60-year-old show here. It's like, I've heard enough about Blink, and I've seen it enough times now where I'm like... The impact is not gone, but it's not the same as it was, obviously. If I could go back and experience it again I for the first time, I would, absolutely. I think it's a, it is a stroke of genius in that sense, but I also am not that bothered about, you know. Like it's, it's not one I will always revisit and always be able to watch. It's one that I sort of need a couple of years in between. And it's been a few years since I've watched it now. So I could probably go back and revisit it and really enjoy it. But if I, just, I couldn't watch them like back to back to back to back. Whereas like Wild Blue Yonder, oh my god. It's just incredible, isn't it? So, that's different. Lovely. Um, 
My top five to one. World Nothing Time, Dr. Falls, excellent. Bad Wolf and Parting of the Ways, excellent. Haunting of Villa Diodati is an interesting one because everyone gasses that one up, but I'm not too sure about that one. Uh, Heaven Sent and Midnight. I need to rewatch Haunting of Villa Diodati, I think, because I, I, I think it's good. <laughs> I, I think it's good. I think it's technically good, but I don't know why it's good, other than people telling me that it's good. I've seen it. I have seen the episode, don't worry. Oh, idiot, George. Idiot. Rookie mistake there. Oh, dickhead. Why'd you do that? Oh, this is a waste again. I fucked it. I did the same bloody thing. Fucking terrible, this is. Um, theories about who Ruby is. I think Ruby is going to be some sort of alien. I think she's going to be some sort of villain. Maybe not a returning villain, but some sort of wrongen. I don't want it to just be like, oh, she's her own mother or something like that, because that's very Moffat. I also don't think Russell will do that. I don't think he would do that. Because I just don't think that's very Russell. You know what I mean? I just... I, I just don't see it. Fuck that, I'm starting that again. What was your favourite title from the title reveals? Azal. What? What? Why are people saying that? You confuse me now. You confuse me, guys. You've lost me. You've lost me by saying this word that I don't know. Don't do that. This is scary. I don't like that. <laughs> Stop doing that. I don't, I don't like it. Newcastle just scored. Fan fucking tastic. Yeah, as per when I'm live streaming, there's a Newcastle match on. Of course there is. Okay. I guess this is okay. I'm gonna just give Azel from the Demons. I've not seen that one actually. That's a that's a one that's a one that's lost on me a little bit, annoyingly. Some diehard fans in here. I really need to get my get on my Classic U game. I really do. Uh, realistically, who do you think Ruby's? I mean, Runt's mum. I presume you mean Ruby. Um. I don't think it's going to be anyone we know. I think it'll be a new character. That's my honest opinion. I don't think it's any sort of big mystery box. What, are you fucking kidding me again? I need to get better at this. What the hell's going on? Okay. Um. Hmm. This is annoying. And by annoying, I don't mean fun. I mean genuinely quite frustrating. I'm not very good at this, am I? Which is really sad. Very fierce. I'm very confused. Um, classic stories. I want to, has anyone got the new box set? Because I really, really, really want to watch the horror, uh, horror fang rock, is it? Or something like that? Another, some sort of other word that I, I can't remember. But I'm, um, I think it's that. And it, it oh, it's one that I've wanted to watch for ages and the CGI looks really good in it. And I'm really tempted to give it a watch. But I've not heard much about it quite yet. So I'm just trying to work out if it's any good. If people think it's any good as a story to sit down and watch, because I don't have the free time really sometimes to sit down and watch loads of new classic Doctor Who, unless I know it's going to be good, in which case I can stomach it. 
You know what I mean? But if it's not, I, I can't. I cannot stomach it. It's just the free time. It's the free time aspect that I struggle with. Don't have much of it. Don't have much left. Since I'm dying, I'm not dying, don't worry. Not that any of you are fucking worried about me dying, but you know. If they think that someone might care. Oh. There we go, that's nice. Okay. Okay. Oh, finally we got rid of that fucking William Arnold there. That's nice. Hmm. Um. This technique does work. It's just got to be done right. <clears throat> Which is harder than you'd think. Enjoying nostalgia bit, George. Great work. I appreciate that, Liam. Thank you very much. We put a lot of time and effort into it, and we're very excited about the future of it, and a lot of stuff planned I can't really talk about. We did an amazing recording session yesterday, me and Cooper, which lasted over three hours long. And that is one episode, trust me. <laughs> it's a special episode, which will be coming out in May. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Um, but it's a very special episode we're both very excited about. Um... And you should all be too, because it was very fun. And it's a lot of fun. I'm, I'm, I'm having a look at the edit now, and it's looking very exciting. Like, it's a very fun thing to, to work on. Um, yeah, and the future's looking bright. We've got a lot of ideas and stuff lined up, potential things for the future. A lot of great stuff. A lot of great, exciting opportunities. I'm being very mysterious about it, but that's in, that is intentional. I've seen horror of Fang, um, Fang Rock on BBC iPlayer, um, Doctor and Leia, and they're in a lighthouse, and it's the Rutans, isn't it? So I do know some stuff about it, but I know that the new box set's got the CGI Rip Master, which looks really good, and makes me wanna, um, makes me wanna see it. But I just want to make sure. I don't know. I want to. I just. It's one of those things. that's like I own it. I'm gonna watch it eventually. But do I watch it soon or later? There he is. Eaton Park is disgusting. Damn. Damn. On nostalgia bit, will you be covering <clears throat> any other big franchises like Marvel horror? Um, is that horror? I can't actually read that horror etc uh yes actually so i can give you a bit of a teaser if you want well I mean, we have got an episode about spider-man actually already out which is um i think it was episode five we talked about spider-man the current state of spider-man um we've got a lot of uh, we actually have got a marvel episode coming up talking about phase one of marvel and we'll probably work our way through reviews of all of the films um we're also going to be talking about dc as well i mean we're both me and cooper are both big superhero uh, film fans or at least have been at one point in time um, so there's a lot to talk about there, you know. There's a lot to discuss and a lot to chat about, opinions-wise. So there's going to be a lot of that in 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 there. Um, do you ever read Doctor Who books as a kid, the ninth and tenth Doctor Adventure books? Uh, I didn't really. I, I actually I didn't believe it or not. I I had a couple of them, but I didn't. I was never a big reader as a kid. Especially not Doctor Who books. I don't know why. I fucking love Doctor Who. I still do, but. I don't know why I didn't read the books as a kid. Strange. Strange how things work sometimes, isn't it? I think we might do alright here, you know, with this with this playthrough. Because we're not doing terribly. 
Oh, we got to. I want. I think we might be able to at least get to tenant. Smith is a stretch, but you know, because you just never know what's around the corner with this bloody game, do you? See like there, where I've just accidentally created a couple of um, Tom Bakers aside from each other. Eccleston's birthday, is it? Oh, his, no, his birthday was... Oh, yeah, you're right. His birthday was in February. I remember it. I remember people talking about it. Oh, got a bit of John Hurt going on there. Do you reckon Chris Eccleston knows that John Hurt regenerated into him at one point? Not in real life, but... Like... In do <laughs> obviously not in real life you idiot yeah uh, yeah but in 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 the show like i wonder if he's just oh, i wonder if just chris eccleson is just aware of anything that happens with doctor who probably not and he probably doesn't care that much either why would he it's that russell t davis <laughs> that's my impression of chris eccleson george sheard man of a thousand voices That was a mistake. All right, we're doing we're doing all right here. I didn't mean to do that. But that actually worked out all right, so I'm not complaining. Paul McGann, baby, let's go. Chris Eccleston um, is definitely theorising about a new Sea Devil spin-off. Do you reckon? <laughs> it's fun. I love memes. I love memes. So yeah, if you're not already aware, as we talked about before, after this stream, we'll probably finish up this game of 13 and then we'll head over to Twitch and we'll be playing... Um, We'll be playing uh, Fortnite and answering more of your dumb questions. And the good thing about Twitch is that you can actually clip moments that you really like and find really funny. Um, that made me look like a twat. And you can meme the shit out of me and it's quite easy to do. Twitch gives you the abilities to be able to do that quite easily on their platform. Which I... It's either a good thing or a really bad thing. I can't really work out, but... Something like that. Come on, I can, I can almost smell David Tennant here. Phew... <laughs> <laughs> That's horrible. I'm sure he smells lovely. Here we go! Ah, oh, that felt good. Damn. Oh, for fuck's sake, George. You had to fuck it up immediately. <laughs> for fuck's sake. I didn't mean to do that. Bollocks. I think I'm fucked here. I think Tenant is as far as I'm getting today. I'll tell you that for one. I've got Sylvester McCoy lingering around here for no reason at all. Fucking hell. I knew that would happen. I bloody knew that would happen. Yeah. 
This game is great, but also terrible. This is called 13. You can find it on the Doctor Who.tv website. It's probably one of the only Flash games they now have in the modern day. And it's pretty good. It's pretty addictive, but it's um, fucking annoying is what it is. These bloody photos, man. I love these edits from Lee Binding as well. They're really, really nice edits of all the Doctors, and it's a really brilliant bit of art, but I can always just associate it with this fucking game now. <laughs> Which is either a really good thing or a really bad thing for them. I don't know. Well, that was risky. That was risky. Let's just, let's just keep doing down. That's the best thing we can do. It's not even our best. Which is crazy. Because I don't remember getting to tenant on this computer. Or recently. Maybe I did though. Who knows. The game is going nice on me there. And I like that. It felt good for a second. And then it's going to just fuck me over again in a minute. Can't wait for that. Um... There we go. Oh, that's satisfying. It's very good. We are actually almost eating into our Twitch time here, though. Which is very, this is very upsetting. But, um... It should be completely offline grinding. Yeah, that's, that's what it is. Technically, by original 2048 rules, if you get to Smith, then you've won. <laughs> really? That's it. That actually is interesting. I can't lie. Annoying, but interesting. So I'm trying to just make the most of this now. Fucking knew they'd do that. I fucking knew they'd do that. That's really annoying. <laughs> God damn it. We've lasted a while though. I'm just I'm just I'm just confused as to how how my live my high score is a bit bloody higher than it was before. It's probably not a good uh, flash game to play when you're tired, I suppose, is it? I guess the mentality is it gives a fuck. Okay, we can just push that down, I guess. Oh god, we've really made a dog's dinner of this. That's all right though. We we, we make we make do. That went really quickly there. I'm not sure what, exactly what happened, but... I need to sort of work from this side, otherwise it's not going to... ...work as a fucking hell. Oh shit, we've actually fucked it. Oh no, we'll just do that instead. We're going really radical with it now. And this is a terrible way of playing, by the way. We've now completely lost all of what the rhythm was, but that was the only way to stay in it. Maybe I should have just quit and we could play Fortnite. There we go, anyway. Ah, oh, damn, 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 damn. We will play more next week, I'm sure. Um, or maybe on the Twitch stream if I get really bored. But um, we are pretty much... Yeah, we'll run out of time anyway. It's 8 o'clock. Um, for those who want to stick around and ask more questions, we're going to be heading over to Twitch pretty much immediately. As soon as this live stream ends over here, we'll be going live over there. Drop me a follow, your name will appear on screen, and I'll give you a lovely big hearty shout out. We are going to be playing Fortnite. If that's not your cup of tea, don't worry, me neither. Um, we'll be playing that, chatting to you guys. Would absolutely love if you guys come and joined. Would really, really appreciate it, uh, but it's completely your call. It'll be a lot of fun. If you've still got Doctor Who questions, it's not out of bounds. We can still talk Doctor Who. We can still chat shit all that sort of lovely stuff but we'll be just be live on a different social media platform so i'll see you all later and if you're not joining into our twitch i will see you all next tuesday with another installment of the who bulletin again remember new podcast episodes every single thursday and we're going over to twitch in a few seconds so come and join have some fun come